morning. We're coming to you from the Association for Applied Sports Psychology's annual conference this year in New Orleans. With me today is Dr. John Heil, and we are going to be talking a little bit about injury in sport. But first of all, why don't you give me a little bit about your background? Uh, currently, I uh, work in a private practice in Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, I'm a clinical psychologist and sports psychologist and have specialized training uh, in injury treatment and uh, dealing with uh, traumatic stress. We hear a lot about injury, probably most notable recently are concussions in the news all the time, but there are certainly other injuries, sometimes career ending, just like a concussion. Um, you help people get through that stage of after they're injured, can't play for a while, and returning to play? Yes. Uh, now, most people, of course, uh, when they're injured, it's minor and they do recover, but it's uh, somewhat unpredictable just how a person will do in any given situation, and there can be a lot of reasons for that. You know, obviously when the injury is more severe, long-standing, and comes at a critical juncture in the person's career, they're more likely to benefit from the type of uh, service that I would provide. Uh, to support athletes, really in the broader picture, we want to try to give uh, sports psychology away in general, and that applies to injury management as well, so coach education is really important in helping people within the team and the sport agency uh, be aware of injury. and. Uh, uh, maybe some coaching for them and what's the best way to manage injured athletes. And I would assume it is really hard, I mean, especially if you're a pro athlete and your your team's depending on you, you also want to be out there playing and you can't play. I would assume that's a really difficult time for some people. Well, it is a difficult time and there are a lot of pressures, uh, especially when we consider that the uh, it's not an exact science when the person is ready to play and sometimes they may play it on a limited basis, which means they may have to reset their expectations for performance. Um, you know, sometimes they're going to want to take a risk, even though it may not be advised, just because it is such a critical moment. And it's in a now or never situation, a person is going to be more inclined to take a risk, and you would have to agree with them that that's a rational process. Sure. Yeah. So you help them get through this time, and hopefully, like you said, most people, they're able to return, and it's not career-ending, because that's a whole other set of issues that they would deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, I understand you have some products that are available to help with sport performance? I do. I have products available in uh, sport uh, and performance enhancement. The, uh, uh, you can go to Amazon okay. and put in John Heil. You can put in John Heil in sport and get products that are sport related or John Heil in meditation or products that are more for general use but blend sports psychology concepts and new age concepts. Well, excellent. We'll have to check those out. So well, again, you. we're at the um, ASP conference in New Orleans, and we'll be right back. Okay. For people who aren't familiar, sports psychology consultants help athletes um, and other performance-based individuals get through certain situations, but I don't think they know how that actually happens, and if you could maybe speak a little bit to that. Yeah, well, there's no formula for this. It's very much individualized, so you need to look at the individual in their particular situation and try to customize the uh, methods that you would use for them. And there's a lot of different ways to go. That's, that's essentially the skill set of the clinician. Uh, recently, I, I would, uh, in addition to my work with uh, sport teams uh, and individuals, I also work with police and public safety agencies. And I recently did a debriefing after a uh, SWAT team call out where a couple of the officers were injured. And in that case, the, 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 the compelling thing was that sense of vulnerability. People often feel much safer in those environments than realistically they should. And then sometimes afterwards, they feel much more vulnerable. Sure. And so trying to reconcile uh, future practices and decision-making, tactical decision-making, and issues with uh, safety and well-being become really important. And I, and I choose this example because it, it's most evident and obvious in a life-threatening situation, but I think it applies to athletes as well because they may find themselves in situations where they're, essentially their life as an athlete is threatened by injury, and, and, uh, and, and so that sense of vulnerability can be really critical. And it can be a spoiler when people can go back because it keeps them second-guessing themselves and, and may pre prevent them from going full out and when you don't play the way you should play, you actually become more vulnerable to injury, and so the risk is then increased. Well, thanks for your explanation. We sure. certainly appreciate it.